Hey everybody, I'm going to show you guys a pretty pretty solid method on uh, reducing your CPU load. So I'll give you guys kind of a context here. In this song I have quite a few different el elements um, and I'll, I'll also show you the method that I have for um, getting samples and all this kind of stuff. So let's have a look at the drums right now. I have Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine different instances of, I think they're all battery. And um, that's quite a lot for the CPU to process all in real time. And um, each of these battery instances, so I'll unfreeze this for right now, just so you guys can see what's within this battery. So battery in itself is is not like a super uh, intense or CPU intense program, but check it out because I have all these different samples here that are loaded within this program, and then Cubase has to take the informa the MIDI information that's on this track, process the MIDI information, and match it to what's in battery and then play back the sample through battery and it's doing that in nine different instances here and that's when you add all that stuff up it's a lot of CPU um, processing going on let alone all the different plugins that I might be using on either the actual singular tracks or the group tracks or the uh, the two bus like your stereo outputs etc etc so it's a lot of cpu load so one of the things that you can do is to um in in this case when you're using cubase or if you're using uh i think ableton live does this is you can freeze the tracks and it you might be able to do this in uh um, logic as well and i think pro tools you can't but let's let's kind of just go through here so in here you just go freeze track which is this button or if you have a controller you hit the freeze so you hit the freeze instrument or freeze instrument and channel so what that does is when you're freezing the instrument it's actually taking all of this information that is here so all of these this MIDI information and it's taking the actual instrument and it's going to make it into a separate audio file, which then Cubase will only play back that audio file rather than playing back the actual MIDI information through the instrument. So that saves quite a bit of CPU uh, on its own. And if you freeze the channel, it's also going to freeze all of your processing that you're doing. So any audio inserts, um, that kind of stuff, will also be pre-processed and then it saves you the real-time CPU processing um, so yeah so let's go ahead and do the freeze and we're gonna do this instrument and and channels and another feature on Cubase here is you unload the instrument when frozen so that also saves even more CPU because instead of having that battery kind of loaded in the background it's also just not there anymore <clears throat> and the great thing about this freeze function, and I can in this case I can only speak about Cubase, is that if you unfreeze, all of your information as far as MIDI, instrument, everything, your inserts, it's all saved. It's just instead of playing back all that stuff in real time, it's it's now an audio file that uh, Cubase kind of has in the background and uses for its own playback and stuff. So when you unfreeze it, like you could see when I unfroze the kick, I still had all that information, all that stuff was uh, able, I was able to access it and I could change it later on if I wanted to. So that's nice. You have um, one way to save CPU like that. Um, another way to do it is probably, I don't want to say it's a more advanced feature or anything, but it's another probably more it's actually more 
I, I want to call it more professional because what you're doing is taking all that stuff. So the instrument, the MIDI data, all that stuff, and then you're going to produce your own audio file. And then you're going to manipulate that audio file to whatever you want it. So in this case, I've taken the kick and I've, uh, I've done everything that I wanted to do within battery and processed it within battery and all this stuff. And then once I found something that I really liked, I then recorded it to an audio track. So right here, actually, I'll just, I'll solo this here. So all I've done was taking that exact sound, laid it down, put it on an audio track. And now I have the individual hits all right here. And then what I do is I just mimic what I've done in the MIDI because I've already decided what I'm going to do as far as the kick, like where it's going to go and stuff for the song structure. So then I just copy paste it and put that in audio format. So now basically these two tracks are doing the exact same thing. So I can mute one of them. And in this case, I'm going to mute and get rid of this track right here. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, where the heck? Oh, because it's frozen, I can't delete it. So we'll unfreeze this. And now I can remove this track. So now all of that information that I've froze, froze, <laughs> freezed. Yeah, I have frozen. All that stuff is just gone now. It's not It's not uh, going to take up any of the CPU. It's just going to play exactly what is being uh what has been laid out on this audio track. So that'll save you a lot of CPU. And if I do this 9 times, which I've kind of already done, it saves me quite a lot of CPU. So that is one trick that is pretty much tried, tested, and true because um, it's kind, it's even kind of old school, but yet it's the most CPU efficient way to do it, which is kind of, kind of seems weird, but yeah. So for all of you people who use, um, let's say contact or uh, battery. Okay. Yeah. So this clap, I'm actually using contact and using some samples through contact. But yeah, this applies for anything, really. You're using instruments to play back samples, and then you you can either freeze them, which saves CPU, or you can lay those uh, samples down onto an audio track and then get rid of that whole track, uh, and then you're saving, saving lots of CPU. So now having said all that, I'll just kind of explain why you would even start with instruments and like contact and battery and all these different things. So for me, all of my samples that I actually, that I use, especially for, uh, for drums, all of these samples are within, um, contact and within battery and all these things. So if I wanted to try and find samples, in audio form and then drag those audio forms down into here that would work fine but it's it's much easier for me to just go in within contact and use all those different samples so I'll give I'll give us a, uh, a small demonstration here um, here we go let's unfreeze this shakers and I'll kind of just demonstrate what I've done So yeah, basically what I do is I I take my different types of uh, drums. So I have, in this case, kicks, snares, blah, blah, blah. Right here, I have shakers. So what, when I was trying to build this song, I was looking for shaker sounds, and I didn't know what I was going to pick. So right here, I have, what, 11 different shaker samples. And as I was playing through the song... I finally decided to take these two, these two samples. 
So, but while I was trying to figure out which sample I was going to use, I was using battery to my advantage by having all these samples loaded within one thing. And then all I had to do was create some sort of pattern that I wanted to keep. And then I could just go in here and then change the samples that I'm using. So for me, that was, it's way more convenient to do it this way. And with all this MIDI stuff, you can, you can change the, the volume of the hits, which is cool. You can, you can move this stuff around if you really wanted to, to change the timing, etc., etc. And another thing that you can't get unless you use this kind of instrument stuff. So like uh, battery or contact, that kind of stuff is sometimes and this isn't this is not always the case but sometimes this one hit can have multiple different samples within this one thing within battery I, i'm pretty sure this is just one audio sample but there's different cases where um let's say within contact you'll have um you'll have a piano simulation so each piano note will have, uh, okay, let's say you're doing a, a C0 or a C1. Let's say C1. You're hitting C1, and depending on how hard you hit that MIDI, it'll trigger different, um, different samples of that exact same C1 note. So if you hit it really hard, it might trigger a sample that is representative of hitting a piano note really hard and then if you hit it soft it's going to play a sound another a different sample that it is an actual piano being played pretty soft so that's something that you can't do with just simple volume you actually have to have an instrument that has multiple samples for different um different hits different uh what do you call that um right here, different velocities. So that's, you know, a couple of reasons to think about why you would still use instruments. So in this case, that's why I use this. Uh, so shakers, now we can get rid of this. Um, yeah, so now having talked about the drums, for the bass, right now, in my situation, I'm not comfortable to turn this instrument into an actual waveform yet i'm still kind of playing around with how it how it works so how it sounds how the uh, the bass kind of slides up and down so i'll unfreeze this and i'll show you what i have right now i'm using uh, monarch so one thing that i have and I, i'm using is the legato uh, the legato slide there's just a tiny little bit and I might want to change that later on. I might want to change the oscillators, the load, the cutoff, all these different things. I might want to automate this stuff within the song. I still haven't finished and decided what's going to be the, uh, the final result. So at this point, I'm just trying to save CPU. So I'm just going to leave this as a freezed instrument with whatever plugins that I have and just unload the instrument. And then I'm I'm safe. I still have all the information there to do any necessary uh, automation. And then once I'm comfortable with keeping it that way as the final baseline, then I can change it into an audio form. And then away I go. Yeah. Um, I hope that kind of covered most of this. This stuff will apply to other synths, obviously. Um, if you're recording things and they're already in audio format so you don't have to worry about doing this kind of stuff if you have recorded audio um i think that covers everything so yeah keep that in mind if you're looking to save cpu and in my case i was running into the the issue where i was it seemed like i wasn't um going anywhere past my cpu load but i was still getting clicks and pops um due to something something was happening where 
I was getting still too much clicks and pops. So the only way to fix that is to get rid of all these instrument channels. So that's the direction that I'm going in right now because I have so many different things going on. Yeah, so, uh, cool. <laughs> We've talked through this. So, yeah, hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in for more tutorials.